Hopefully as we go through the hurricane season and you've taken time to subscribe, I'll be able to pass along some good news. There's no doubt going to be tropical storms and hurricanes that develop. They, they always do. Hopefully they, they stay away from land. So that's what I'm hoping for. But I want to show you the hurricane problem, and this relates to last year, right? With Hurricane Barrel, which was so devastating to many of us across parts of St. Vincent, the Grenadines over toward a Grenada, uh, about as powerful uh, as it gets. And this happened relatively early in the season. It started to develop late in June into early July, of course. So again, I, I want to show you the track in this and how it relates to uh, kind of the, the biggest hurricane problem, uh, one of the biggest ingredients I watch out for as we get into the hurricane season. Now, let me take a step back and talk about the water temperatures. Here's the Atlantic Basin, which includes the Gulf Caribbean and the Atlantic. Water temperatures are a little bit cooler off the coast of Africa. So hopefully that means uh, fewer named storms deeper into the hurricane season. There's still going to be some, uh, no doubt, but as you get deeper into the hurricane season, they typically come off, the rain and storms come off the coast of Africa because of the trade winds. And then we see the rain and storms march across and feed off of the warm water and develop potentially into hurricanes and tropical storms. Early in the season, though, we're usually looking closer to home for development. And this season, that's going to be more of the issue. Not so much everything coming off the coast of Africa, but looking closer to home because you see closer to home across the Caribbean and Gulf, for example, and parts of the Atlantic, water temperatures, this orange or red shading, they're running well above average. Even some record levels of water temperatures for this time of year in the warm water, that's what fuels the hurricanes, right? But that is just one ingredient. Let me show you some of the water temperatures just to give you a feel. Uh, near Jamaica, running at 28 degrees Celsius or 83 degrees Fahrenheit. We're pushing 80 degrees Fahrenheit uh, in parts of uh, the bay over toward the Gulf and on the uh, Atlantic side near the Bahamas already. So water temperatures are warm and they're going to be warming up further. Now, uh, hang with me for a second in this. This I want to get into the hurricane uh, problem. Uh, the one thing I'm, I'm really watching out for. Now, as a hurricane uh, passes over the warm water, it feeds off of the warm water. That's that's the fuel, right? Now, as it, if it moves over some cooler water, it would weaken. Here's the deal. What's going on uh, is the heat content. That's the hurricane problem or the hot spots. Now, as a hurricane moves over warm water, typically it brings up the water starts to churn around. Deep down, there's cool water, right? And then eventually that cool water comes up to the top uh, as everything kind of mixes and churns around. So maybe the hurricane can't strengthen as much. But the issue is sometimes now we get these hurricanes going over these hot spots in the warm water is deep, very f uh, far down. So as these hurricanes move over these hot spots or areas of high heat content, they don't necessarily bring up some cooler water. If the water is warm all the way down, it just brings up more warm water and that will allow a hurricane to really intensify just like we saw with barrels. So where are these hot spots? And you can see them right through the Caribbean, especially central and western Caribbean, right near Jamaica. And again, where we had hurricane barrel develop, there were these brighter colors, the yellows you're seeing on the map. We had some of these areas uh, near Barbados, for example, close to Trinidad of high heat content. So as uh, systems try to develop, even if they're not a hurricane yet, as they try to develop, if they pass these hot spots over here and uh, back through the central and western Caribbean, and they could really intensify these systems from nothing to a powerful hurricane very quickly. Now, I don't mean that in a scary way. I want you to know that's what I'm watching out for. If we see a tropical storm, uh, for example, pass near Barbados or pass near Jamaica, well, that's high concern to me that they're going to run over this very warm in warm, deep water, and that could fuel a system. But with that said, that is just one of many ingredients. If a, a, a storm were to pass near Jamaica, it doesn't mean it's going to form into a hurricane barrel. I also need to watch what's going on above our heads, right? It may pass over very warm water in very warm deep water, these areas of high heat content, but if above our heads it's a very hostile environment, that would be a good thing because that would, wouldn't allow the showers and storms to build up. So there are so many ingredients, but these hot spots are the hurricane uh, problems. And you can see here looking back, 
to a barrel, which again was late June into July of last year, absolutely devastating. Uh, how it uh, intensified, intensified quickly, and it got so strong. Well, barrel kept passing over some of these hot spots that we had last year. They were in some of the same areas, allowing it to intensify so very quickly. So there are these areas that it just rolled over above our heads. Conditions were conducive, unfortunately, to development, and then it rolled over these hot spots, and that just fueled this system uh, even further. So that's the hurricane problem to really watch uh, into this season. And I'll be monitoring carefully. Water temperatures are warm to begin with, and then we're going to see that warm, those pockets of warm in deep water that could really rapidly intensify some of these uh, systems. Now, as we get into the upcoming hurricane season, here's the list of names for this year. And you may see some similar list. The list recycle every six years. The same names come up. Unless you have a very impactful system, then that name is retired, and there's an organization out there that adds in some new names. So Andrea is the first name on the list. Then Barry, Chantal, Dexter, Aaron, you get down the list, Jerry, Karen, Lorenzo, and hopefully we don't get too far down the list. Now, when are things going to start to develop? Now, as we go through the hurricane season, there are these tropical waves, those clusters of rain and storms off the coast of Africa that march all the way across toward the Caribbean. Those are the areas I watch to see if they will develop. We get about 55 to 65 tropical waves moving across areas of disturbed weather moving across in the hurricane season. But they start to, we start to see some of these tropical waves moving across pretty soon, especially as we get into uh, May. So uh, the hurricane season officially starts June 1st, goes to the end of November. But looking back at history, in April, we've had seven named uh, systems or classified systems. In May, about 50, we start to see these tropical waves move across. And we have that warm water now in the Caribbean, for example. So it would not be a surprise to see a named system uh, before the start of the hurricane season this year because those water temperatures are so warm and, of course, watching the heat content. So the heat content is one of the biggest ingredients I'm watching as we get into the hurricane season. Of course, watching all of the conditions out there, including what's going on with the environment. Saharan dust, for example, sometimes brings in some stable air, which could be a good thing, and lower the number of hurricanes that do develop. But we'll wait and see on that. Right now, some good news is that I'm watching some areas of rain around, and we're gonna be watching that now uh, because a lot of us do need to get the rain. Of course, that could mean flooding on the flip side. Watching this front near the uh, Bahamas, moving over toward Bermuda, a little bit more settled over toward parts of the United States uh, that was dealing with the uh, devastating weather. With that said, they're still dealing with a lot of flooding. Arkansas, for example, uh, horrific flooding all the way up to the north, uh, parts of Indiana, uh, for example. Now, today, let's start close and then I'll widen out the view, watching out for some spotty areas of rain, Antigua, Barbuda, Honduras, we could see some isolated flooding. This is tomorrow, so this is our Thursday afternoon. Spotty areas of rain, Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic, over toward Honduras, but watch this. As we get toward the weekend, uh, we're going to see that rain chance picking up. Scattered areas of rain, this here is on Friday. Look at the rain picking up, Costa Rica, Panama, and Colombia, higher chance of rain. But we're going to start, as we transition closer to the hurricane season, we're going to start to see more rain flaring up. The front passes by, but it allows a little return flow, a little more moisture to build. So hopefully this pans out for some of us. Haiti, the Dominican Republic on Saturday, Jamaica, Costa Rica, Panama, right through the Turks and Caicos near Puerto Rico. Look at that. This for some of us could be very welcome news. Not to, not to rain on any of your plans, of course, but we'll see a better chance of at least scattered showers for some of us as we work our way into the weekend. Eastern Caribbean, spotty showers, St. Lucia, Barbados, uh, Trinidad, kind of the hit or miss showers back towards St. Kitts and Nevis. Now, uh, temporarily, a little bit of a cool down. Winds out of the east in the Eastern Caribbean, but I showed you that front moving through the Bahamas. We have a slight cool down with winds coming out of the north, the Cayman Islands, Cuba, uh, Bahamas. It won't, it's still gonna be warm. It just may not be quite as warm over the next couple of days. This here is taken ahead as we work our way into Thursday, and you see those arrows, a lot of little tiny arrows, but there's that northerly flow temporarily, so we're not quite as hot. It's that front that's kind of sinking in, 
easterly flow in the uh, eastern Caribbean with some of the winds gusting to about 30, 40 miles per hour or about 50 uh, kilometers an hour. And then as we get into Friday, still the winds coming down out of the north uh, in the western Caribbean, that easterly flow as we work our way into the eastern Caribbean. I'll expand out in a second. Let me show you the seas though. They are gonna be elevated with that front near Bermuda and the northern Bahamas. That's where things are gonna be more elevated the next couple of days. This is tomorrow. Here's meters, here's feet on the right-hand side of your screen. But on Friday, uh, much of our water basins, uh, many of our water basins are a little bit more relaxed, which is good for any uh, boating uh, concerns as we get into the uh, weekend. Uh, not as rough in the Gulf, Caribbean, and the Atlantic waters as we slide into the weekend. Now, here's the expanded view. Here's that rain that's going to work into Bermuda. That front has cleared the Atlantic region of Canada. And keeping an eye on a little sneaky system trying to move into the mid-Atlantic of the United States. See some of the rain on Thursday still near Bermuda, mainly north of the Bahamas. And then you can see that rain building on Friday back toward the mid-Atlantic and northeast of the United States. Even that chance of some severe weather in parts of the southeast U.S., on uh, Friday and then as we get into Saturday here comes that next system mainly rain for New England back through the mid-Atlantic maybe a little snow on the back side of this over toward parts of Quebec uh, over toward the higher terrain and get over toward a snowshoe as you work your way back toward uh, West Virginia as we get into the uh, weekend now, as far as the rain totals go heaviest rain stays to the north of the Bahamas but still we may get a few spots of 50 millimeters of rain or two inches of rain in the northern Bahamas scattered areas of rain the next three days. So this takes us through Friday, Jamaica, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic. But as I showed you in tomorrow's video, I'm going to be really highlighting that additional rain that is going to develop in the Caribbean as we get into the uh, weekend. But we may get a couple thunderstorms that could give us a quick couple inches of rain, parts of uh, Puerto Rico. And then you can see scattered areas of rain could lend itself uh, to a few showers, but mainly uh, less than an inch, less than 25 millimeters of rain, St. Vincent of the Grenadines, back through Trinidad. We could get a couple spots that are pushing 75 millimeters of rain or three inches of rain, Guyana and Suriname. There's the rain that's going to pick up Colombia, Costa Rica, Panama. Not for all of us, but for some of us, we'll have some totals over 100 millimeters of rain or four inches of rain in that little pocket still near Honduras. We could get some isolated areas of flooding. Much of Mexico back through Texas over toward Louisiana on the dry side as we go throughout the end of the week. So 40% chance of a shower storm in Jamaica today, up to a 50% chance on Thursday. It may be higher though as we get into the upcoming weekend. 40% chance of a passing shower in the Cayman Islands today and a 30% chance tomorrow. 40% chance of a spotty shower in Trinidad today, about a 20% chance tomorrow mainly dry and a 30% chance of an isolated shower in Barbados today. Today and tomorrow, St. Lucia, rain chance holding at 30%, a 30% chance in Grenada, down to a 20% chance for tomorrow. 30 to 40% chance of a passing shower the next two days, St. Vincent the Grenadines, same thing as we work our way into Martinique. Dominica, rain chance 40% today, and just a 30% chance of an isolated shower tomorrow and Friday, a 30% chance the next two days in Guadeloupe. Antigua, Barbuda were mainly dry, but you see the rain chance picking up a little bit. Tomorrow and Friday, some spotty showers around around 20 to 30% chance. St. Kitts and Nevis over toward Montserrat. We could get a couple isolated showers, same thing in Guilla and St. Bart's, but the rain chance is not too high. Just a 20% chance the next two days, St. Martin, Saba, and Stasia. But you see by the end of the week starting to build in Puerto Rico, we're up to a 50% chance of scattered showers and storms on Friday. U.S. and British Virgin Islands, rain chance staying on the low side. Northern Bahamas, a better chance of getting some of those scattered showers. 20% chance today, but again, by the end of the weekend to the weekend, the Turks and Caicos, our rain chance is gonna be picking up and it will be picking up as well in the Dominican Republic. Friday into the weekend, uh, some of the rain could be widespread. And even by the end of the week and the weekend in Haiti, the rain chance will be elevated. We need some of the rain, but we'll monitor some of those river crossings. Isolated chance of Belize, about a 30% chance. Aruba, Curacao, Bonaire, 20, maybe 30% chance of that uh, passing shower. Holding at that 50% chance of scattered areas of rain, Guyana and Suriname with still some pockets of flooding around. Isolated showers possible across Cuba, a 30% chance. Building though by the end of the week, as I showed you, 
Costa Rica and Panama, especially closer to the Caribbean side. Nicaragua, 40% chance. Still some areas of rain, isolated flooding possible today in uh, Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador. That rain chance has gone down, and it will go down further. Mexico City, we are on the dry side and mainly dry across the uh, Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Northern Colombia, though, that rain chance is going to get higher with that flood threat. 30 to 40% chance in northern Venezuela and that front passing by Bermuda today into tomorrow with that higher chance of some uh, rain. So a front on the move, scattered areas of rain, still monitoring the earthquakes and watching those hurricane ingredients as we get closer to the hurricane season. So thank you for taking the time to subscribe as we build this weather community as it is for you. Have a good day ahead.